Hi, I'm Natalie Myers, and I'd like to get a conversation started here in the COVID Cognitive City on independent, fair, and timely ways to publish findings and share data. Collaborative, cross-disciplinary efforts are needed to tackle data sharing challenges. This past spring and summer, as a member of the RDA COVID-19 Working Group, I worked with over 400 other to author the COVID-19 recommendations and guidelines on data sharing. You can access the report online. During the COVID-19 pandemic, everyone recognizes there's a critical need for rapid data sharing. This creates a trade-off between timeliness and precision. The current rapid and massive research response with its diverse outputs also challenges the interoperability of data, which hinders rapid threat detection and evidence-based response. For example, coroner's guidance varies considerably from one area to another and has changed somewhat dramatically as the pandemic progresses. Cause of death in potentially COVID-19 involved cases is not tested for consistently, nor is it reported in timely or consistent ways. So this kind of data is not well integrated into pandemic dashboard systems, especially for those with comorbidities and for the non-hospitalized those who don't or couldn't seek care before death. For the RDA guidelines, the content was divided into four research areas, clinical, omics, epidemiology, and social sciences. A set of resource lists in each of these areas is compiled in a publicly available Zotero collection. Please see the related presentation in this session from Claire Austin, co-chair of the RDA COVID-19 Epidemiology Working Group and curator of that bibliographic data collection. You might be wondering what the RDA guidelines look like. Here's a subsection related to data sharing and omics. So our member contributors were those with specialties in virus genomics data, host genomics data, structural data, metabolomics, and lipidomics. You'll see an example of lipidomics on a following slide. For most of these data modalities, the data can be deposited in aligned existing database resources, which are each detailed in the report. Many of these resources now particularly support specific COVID-19 subsets. Let's look at the omics policy recommendation. Three considerations for omics during the COVID-19 pandemic that our group focused on are that reusability of data requires documented provenance, that it's important to increase the reusability of data with consistent pre-processing, and that if researchers have any existing SARS-CoV, MERS-CoV, or EBOV data that has not yet been made public, that we hope you will consider publishing that data now as it can be a useful reference. In COVID-19 patients with pre-existing conditions, lipidomics can reveal an altered lipid composition in infected cells and serum lipid levels. Here's an excerpt from the omics section emphasizing the sharing of lipidomics data. Another new report focused on recommendations for research institutions provides additional guidance for publishers, tool builders, and professional associations. It was co-organized by the Association of Research Libraries, the Association of American Universities, and the Association of Public and Land-Grant Universities. The group worked together through spring 2020 to author key recommendations for effective data practices to support a more open research ecosystem with an emphasis on FAIR. You can download the report online at the ARL.org website. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Allen Institute for AI partnered with leading research groups to prepare and distribute the COVID-19 open research data set known as CORD-19. This freely available data set is provided to the global research community to generate new insights using AI and natural language processing techniques. It's now a resource of over 200,000 scholarly articles, including over 100,000 with full text. Because of the rapid acceleration in new coronavirus literature, it can be difficult for the medical research community to keep up. For comparison's sake, I looked, and the CORD dataset itself grew fourfold since May, when we first began to text mine it. Let's just talk briefly about that project. The goal of the project was to analyze and enhance 
COVID-19 and additional coronavirus-related data sets using a homegrown text processing tool known as Distant Reader, developed by my colleague Eric Morgan at Notre Dame. What we found was that CORD is open, but not verified. We needed better ways to process the CORD metadata meaningfully, alongside the full text and intersect the two with our analyses. It was also a challenge for us to output and share our analyses of the CORD-19 dataset in a truly fair way. Here are some reasons why it didn't scale well. Our gateway, even though it was on Exceeds Jetstream, didn't scale well to process the CORD-19 corpus, mostly because of the non-parallel nature of our reduction step. This scalability issue also exposed a tension between the values of the distant reader. One dearly held assumption of distant reader has always been that users should be able to download their outputs and reports about them and access this independent of the gateway after processing is complete. Our reports didn't scale to fit the size of the CORD-19 dataset as well as they could have. We spent a lot of time trying to make stateless reports that could perform at scale. Verification of gateway output is a priority, but how do providers decide what first? We can all agree that we have to make more fair gateway outputs. We know we all need fair metadata. For example, we should be able to support ORCIDs for users that are citable and resolve back to job outputs. We should offer a persistent identifier, a PID, or DOIs for publicly shared outputs. And we should be able to provide findable, resolvable links back to content targets. We should do some license checking when we resolve back to content targets, and we should make license values visible and machine readable. But beyond PIDs and ROARs, DOIs and licenses, we still need to remember the importance of providing feature-rich, stable APIs for our gateway content and graph or RDF representations of our content that provide a way for people and software to intersect quickly with our endpoints. Exaptive's approach on COVID-19 Cognitive City does just this. In the Exaptive COVID-19 Cognitive City, the full text index of CORD-19 is built into the larger graph of activities, organizations, and people. When those CORD-19 resources intersect the graph of collaborators and active projects, you get synergies and discoveries. You can make connections between projects, people, ideas, and resources. You might be thinking, this is all great, but I shouldn't need an HPC to keep up with the fire hose of COVID information. Don't worry. You can subscribe to the COVID-19 Literature Situation Report from UW. It's a daily, Monday through Friday newsletter that provides a succinct summary of the latest scientific literature related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Please see the related talks in this session by Lit Report editors Jennifer Ross and Brandon Guthrie for more information. Thank you so much for listening. I hope we can have a great conversation here on the COVID City.